Hello. 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 It's Pierre and Russell for another episode, another exciting episode of the Pierre and Russell show. And what pen are you using? About, about an hour. What was that? Where we talk about stupid things for about an hour while we draw stranger things. Yes, stupid and strange. Uh, what pen are you using? Um, I'm got, I've got the um the classic platinum preppy. Oh, good. Fountain pen uh, with an extreme fine uh nib. Okay, good. Well, I will. I'll be using a real pen. No, I'll be using a pen as well, but I don't know what kind until I start. Um, I might do the same thing here where I am using the fuzzy duckling. Look at that. Am I ready to draw a fuzzy duckling? We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. Oh, banana cream and fuzzy duckling. Fuzzy duckling is the lighter of the two. Um, yes, we do draw funny things. Um, so I'll draw a fuzzy duckling with a very fine pen I've got. Do ducks have wings? They're just too fuzzy for that, I suppose. Ducks have wings, did you say? Yes, ducks have wings. Do ducklings have wings? It was a duckling, I guess I was thinking about. Fuzzy duckling. Yeah, duck they, they just they just aren't very big yet, so it's harder to see them. Okay, so here's the little feet. I'm using a very fine nib I got on eBay the other day, and it's filled with red ink. Um, so here's my fuzzy duckling. One of my neighbors in my building was moving out of her studio and I was able to uh, score big as were other people in the building. We got to uh, go into her studio and grab what she didn't want to take home. And uh, I, got, I got a bunch of uh, oil sticks which are like humongatoid crepa crayons. So, uh, so there's my fuzzy duckling. Let's see if I can make it fuzzier. Um, just like the eternal challenge in life, how to make one's duckling fuzzier. It is difficult. Fuzzy duckling making. I need some black. I'm just going to go right into a brush. A brush brush. Okay. Um, so... Can we talk about your Mormon experience? Is that, oh, made, yeah. is that suitable for children? Not that children are watching us, but so you you enjoy uh, talking with door to door Mormons, right? They um, it's it's amazing. They they are always very eager to to return much like Christ himself. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, oh, well, actually maybe he's not so eager. I don't know. He hasn't, he hasn't told he you. Hasn't been, he hasn't he's been saying, getting on that. Yeah. It's, um, so wait. it's, uh, but the Mormons, unlike other, sects uh, believe that uh, Christ took a field trip at some point and 
uh, preached, is that the right word, to the, uh, the American natives, the Native American tribes, right? Yeah, who were That's actually like a, a tribe of the, uh, I, I can't remember. So Lephi, I think, had sons, and I can't remember their names. Or no, it was Lehi. Lehi had sons. One of them, the important one is Nephi, because he was the good son. And then the other two formed two tribes, two warring tribes that were eventually sent off to America and their skin turned red. And I believe I'm getting this right, but their skin turned red as a result of them being bad sons. I see. But and, uh, and so Christ came back. And once he came back, he went to America because, you know, that's where he would go. <laughs> because that's what everyone was doing. And that's what everybody was doing at the time. And Christ was no slouch when it came to fashion. Yeah, he just thought, okay, Condé Nast Traveler says visit the USA. And it, it, was, it was in the Michelin Travel Guide. The Michelin Travel Guide. Okay, so he went there and uh, preached. But evidently the preaching didn't really hold stick because they all forgot it until the conquistadors came and screwed everyone over. Right? Is that how it yeah, works? I don't know exactly how that goes. Um, but essentially, but you know, no. their whole issue, they're not so much concerned with the that whole story. They're not interested in that. What they're inter well, what they're interested about is um, the fact that uh, their prophet Joseph Smith was definitely in contact with God. Uh, he I was he, he like he definitely that's a wonderfully fuzzy duckling. I don't know <laughs> where the where the duckling begins and the fuzz ends. Well, that's what fuzzes fuzzy ducklings are all about. And are you making the Hamburglar? I, I'm afraid that I am. Well, why should I be afraid? He's he's the perfect subject. Well, okay, so John Smith. Like the, just like the Big Mac is the perfect sandwich. <laughs> Eat it at McDonald's, everybody. Okay, well, and I'm they, done with my, with my duckling. And that's an ugly, fuzzly, fuzzy duckling. Let's see if I can find a poppy crepe, alabaster, total recall. Now, total I have recall. A, I have another paint swatch. It's almost this color made by the same company that's called Senior Moment. Oh. They come up with some, they, like, they make some names that make sense, that are appealing. And then some of these names, I wonder why. Why would I want? Why would I want my color to be named this? Yeah, why, see, who, senior moment. I found it. Senior moment. Once, true de memoir. Okay. True de memoir or Ritzino. No, it's uh, Spanish. I don't know. So. In a way, Total Recall and Senior Moment are should be opposites, but they're they, almost they, identical. Uh, I'll have to save those two for some other kind of a drawing. Let's find another Radiant Sunrise, Candlelight. Now, Radiant Sunrise and Candlelight are quite different from each other, as they probably should be. I'll do lemon punch. So that's going to be a a uh, wait for it, Pierre. I'm going to get my pen. Where's my pen? It's right here. Lemon punch. See if I can make this work. And in this corner, lemon punch. Here's his little trunks. In the yellow trunks is lemon punch. 
in this corner. And there in the in the shining outfit is gold dust. <laughs> gold is senior moment. Um so here's here's lemon punch and he's going to be do I now I have to make him punch. Or is he going is this going to be I'll I'll make him it's after the punch. So here's the the opponent flat on the canvas and he's lemon punch is raising his big beefy arms above his lemony lemony fresh thing clasping his gloved hands together got to put armpit here under under there right yeah cuz you have to because it's a man yeah, it, we're gendering this lemon. This this lemon is has been gen- gendrified. Okay, I need red. I need a bright red thing. Yeah, this will this will have to do. Here's his gloves. Um. He'll have red trunks and red little red shoes. Oh, those are they wear high tops, don't they? You mean professional wrestlers? Yes. I'm pretty Box. sure. Box. Box. Wrestlers, because it's all fake, they wear, you know, they can wear high heels into the ring because it's all choreographed, right? I mean, it's basically like um, like going on the catwalk. Taking your turn on the catwalk. Catwalk. So anyway, when you were talking to the Mormons, they were trying to convince you to become a Mormon. And what were you trying to convince them? I mean, I wasn't trying to convince them of anything, but I was giving them a lot of suggestions some of which they liked, right? And some of them, some of them may seem to make them uncomfortable. Well, tell me, tell me two. Don't tell me which was which, and I'll try to guess. Tell me two, so of, the, I, two, two of the suggestions. Yes. So there were, I can't remember the exact way I worded it, but essentially one of the things I, I sort of said to them was that, you know, the reading of the of the Bible and the participation in it uh, yeah. is is what causes uh, is is sort of what causes faith to be right. Uh, well, I'll take your word. Now, the subtext of that is well, yeah. The more you participate in this thing, the more you start to gonna believe it, right? Okay. <laughs> but they they. They didn't read all the way into that. Now, the other one that now they were uncomfortable with the uh, notion that I I suggested, well, whenever you pray, uh, there's. okay, you're still there. I I suggested there's this passage uh, that basically says uh, nothing imperfect can dwell in the presence of God. Right. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. And so one of the Mormons had told me, and you know, one of his personal stories, he's, he basically said, well, you know, I was uncertain at a moment in my life where whether I was worthy to pray to God or not being such an unworthy creature and blah, blah, blah. I mean, he didn't yeah. say it like that, but, you know, he's basically saying, I'm just a human. How am I supposed to talk to God? Right, which is which is a good question to be asking oneself sometimes. Yes, it should. Right, but I suggested that the passage that passage could be interpreted as well. If you're praying, you're standing in the presence of God, right? Yeah. Uh, and so, if you're in the presence of God, then you have to become pure because nothing impure can bec- can dwell in the presence of God. Now they they tried to steer me back on this one a bit, and yeah. 
you know, you have to ask yourself, well, why is that? What I'm saying is a very positive assertion, actually. Yeah, I would think that they would like that. You would think that they would like that. But here's the thing. If you say, if you say, well, by prayer alone, I can get into the presence of God and become pure. Oh, I see. Then I can also perhaps say, well, maybe baptism isn't necessary. And baptism is a covenant. Not oh, so much with God in this sense, but with the church. With with the Mormons, especially. The Mormons, yeah. yeah because they, so, were, they were, there was a, t- did you ask them about when they were uh, baptizing all of the Jews that were killed during the Holocaust? No, I did didn't hear, ask about did, that. Well, next I'm time I talk to them, ask them about that, because that's what they were doing, the Mormons. And... Uh, Rightly so, <laughs> the Jews of the world, whether maybe be- believers or Orthodox or not, but e- and even some Christians were mortified by the chutzpah of the uh, of the of the Mormons doing that. And well, the Mormons, that's... of course, think. The Mormons, of course, they, they, were, doing something good, right? they were retroactively baptizing them. They were retroactively baptizing them into a faith that they didn't believe in. So, yeah, that's something that you can actually do. And now, <laughs> looking at it from their perspective, you have to think: well, if if you actually believe that the Book of Mormon uh, is the correct narrative, and that they would be doing them a grand justice in a certain sense, saying, well, we're going to insert you into this narrative since you didn't have, or you were not given the opportunity the, to. Yeah, didn't have the ability to do this at the time. So therefore, we'll do it. We'll do it now. But well, they're also getting into this notion of, well, they, they never agreed to this. I didn't, I didn't want to enter into this contract. Yeah. So that was one of the things. What was the other thing you said? Oh, well, the other thing I said was what I talked about with um with um the idea that, you know, faith uh faith is what produces this this uh this relationship with God and that becomes stronger through acting in faith, right? Okay. That was that was the one. That's the one that they I liked. Guess they sort of ruined it, but but you know that basically on board. With. How come mine doesn't look like Van Gogh's? I'm drawing a sunflower on the sunflower color. You there? It's because and, and yeah, I'm there now. I'm even using this broad-tipped Schaefer pen because it's sort of like the reed pens that Van Gogh used. I think you've disappeared on me again. Hello. Well, you're back. Okay, we are back. Now, what were you saying about um about the I was I was wondering which of the things the, the Mormons didn't like that you were talking and because I, I assume the first one is the one they didn't like, because you were, were saying that you could be praying to God. And that alone gave you goodliness and godliness. Yeah, and basically, you know, well, make me pure again. And make you pure while you could, but, be, um, doing, they, while you right. could be doing something like drinking alcohol while you were doing that, which is what Mormons don't like. It makes it sound like, yeah, you know, you, know, you were just saying that you see my little Van Gogh flower? My Van Gogh yeah. sun. Okay, I'm going to wreck it now using my finger paints. 
Karina. I do not see any wrecking happening. There is no reckoning here. Um, I was given this. This is one of the things I found. I wonder if this is, is this what you're using? An acrylic pen with a big old fuzzy tip? Looks about like it. Uh, yeah, and it even has the mixing ball in there. Those yeah. things, they're really a lot fun to work with. Okay, well, I will I will fill that up with something. Um, what I need to find, though, is a yellow marker so I can continue to work on my beautiful sunflower. I'm using a a uh, Marvy Statler Mars sort of squidgy rubbery tipped thing right now. So I, I don't know if you saw the little battleship that I made on on the battleship gray card. I posted it on Facebook and Instagram and I sold it. One of my old neighbors who lives now somewhere in a different place bought it. How much? I shouldn't ask. <laughs> you shouldn't ask how much I sold it for? Probably not. That would be impolite, but you know, I'm a he I'm I'm a heathen. We've already established that. It was it was forty dollars. Okay. That, I mean, that's a really good uh, for, especially for such a small drawing, although, you know, frankly, it was quite accomplished. Uh-huh. Well, you know, $40 is what you spend on, what do you spend on $40 these days? To the grocery. Nice, a nice dinner for one with alcohol yeah so he can go without dinner for one he's buying it for a friend that likes that likes uh ship battleships i guess so look at that i made it better i think so i made it i made it very angry that's just it's just the word thinking. It's an angry sunflower. It's a sunflower that's being ignored by everyone. And God damn it, I'm a sunflower. Pay attention to me, it's saying. Or something. Gonna flash eventually. If it doesn't your, get attention it needs. Your dog just peed on my stem. Stupid asshole. That's what it's saying. There, I think I'm done with that. Add to shopping cart, $1 million. Okay, what else can I draw? Lamb's wool. So I want to have your opinion on okay. something. Um, I've basically given up on taking Christmas seriously. This okay, time. good. You know, for me, that translates in. Oh, it's still there. So, hello. Are we still? Are we good? Am I back? Uh, you're back. Yes. Okay. So, decided to taking Chris seriously. Now, okay. that for me translates into um. Well, I'm people gift. But they're going completely, utterly, utterly dent and useless gifts. Okay. So here is what I'm thinking for my brother and my sister-in-law. Do okay. you know what a guanxiu banana is? I don't. So it is also known by the name 
Big Mike. Okay. Um, so, Banana, the Banana, back when Bananas first to get popular in the United States, uh-huh. right? Yeah. So, so um, the Gromy show uh, was supposedly sweeter and, I mean, it wasn't sweeter than the Cavendish, which we have now today. The big thing, the big thing about Big Mike was that um, it had a thicker skin and it took a bit longer to ripen. So that means that it was much more ideal for shipping. You could store it for longer. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, the problem is the Gromy shell, like all bananas, is bred on a cultivar. Now, cultivar is basically like a shoot. Uh, So if you were to, um, do you know what it is to... Like, if you were to take a branch off of a tree and you were able to, uh, yeah, cutting. If you were to take a cutting from a tree, uh-huh. do you know what that process is like? I know of it, yes. Okay, good. So, basically, it's you're basically taking a cutting from the banana plant, from the banana yeah. tree. Yeah. You're cloning that banana. So the problem with that is like is like the problem with um, inbreed, where if there is a certain disease that somebody gets, it's going to repeat itself over and over again. So yeah. eventually, um, there was a parasite that got a hold of the the mite plantations, right? Okay. And so, um, and so it was very nearly wiped out. Okay. And now we eat a niche banana, although there is a chance that that could be going the way of the big mic. Okay. Now, why is all of this relevant to to this conversation? Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, I, I, that was now, on the back of my tongue. By back up, tip of my tongue, the back, yeah. back of my mind. And the answer, okay, so the exciting answer, the is, answer what? is that uh, banana is not extinct. Oh, fun, cool. Okay, it's not extinct. I think we've lost him for a second, but anyway, it's not extinct. Hello. Prize of winning orchid here. Blue ribbons. It's getting blue ribbons. Another one back here. 